holy Lord, most holy Lord, you alone are worthy of my praise. O holy Lord, most holy Lord, with all of my heart I sing. With my heart I sing great are you, Lord. Worthy of praise, you are holy and true. Great are you, Lord, most holy Lord. Holy Lord, most holy Lord, you alone are worthy of my praise. O holy Lord, most holy Lord, with all of my heart I sing. With my heart I sing great are you, Lord. We concluded our study in the book of 1 Corinthians last week. And I think now for a little while, we're going to just do some topical studies. And this being the month of November here in the United States and around the world, we celebrate Thanksgiving this time of year. And so I've chosen the topic of Thanksgiving for the lesson today. You know, this is one of the most uh, noble holidays, I think, that we celebrate in our country is the holiday of Thanksgiving. And uh, you can always tell when Thanksgiving arrives. It used to be <laughs> just a few weeks prior, but now it's a few months or more prior to Thanksgiving. You begin seeing stores put out all their Christmas displays and their decorations. And of course, Thanksgiving receives a polite nod from retailers around our country, but that's about it. It's not the commercial success that Christmas is, and so it does not get the attention that Christmas gets. However, that does not keep Thanksgiving from being one of the most noble holidays, I think, that we observe. Uh, there is nothing more noble than a grateful creation offering its heartfelt thanks to its creator, the psalmist expressed it so well in Psalm 95, verses 1 through 6, where the psalmist writes, O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. A good shepherd always provides well for his sheep, and Jesus is certainly the good shepherd. There is something refreshing about giving of thanks. It's even invigorating. A young child was struggling with some unruly shoelaces, and it seemed uh, all of his bows were either falling apart or turning into knots. His father noticed and came to the child's assistance. And when the bow had been neatly fastened and secured, the child looked into his father's eyes and said, Thank you, Daddy. 
The father felt pleased inside and beamed, You're welcome, son. The boy hustled out the door to play, and the father returned to his study with his son's simple thank you still echoing in his head. A simple thank you is not only polite, but it probably is the best incentive that we are ever able to give to others. A well-deserved thank you establishes the worth of an individual and helps him to see some meaning in his or her existence. Sometimes we may say thank you with a gift. At the end of a particularly busy time of year, one boss took his secretaries out to dinner. It was his way of saying thanks for the extra effort that they had put into their jobs during the hectic days of business. It really didn't matter, and it didn't set the boss back a whole lot financially, and he discovered that this expression of gratitude had a way of turning mediocre secretaries into excellent secretaries. It seems that he had discovered the truth of an old maxim that we often quote. When we say it's not the gift, but the thought that counts. There's another fact that we may often overlook by, or may be overlooked by the business world. It's almost a standing joke in the business community uh, that has to do with the gold watch given to someone at the end of his uh, service in a company, his retirement. The fact of the matter is that a few simple expressions of thanks over the course of the years is worth more to an individual than all the gold watches and all the jewelry stores in all the world. But when it comes to expressing our thanks to God, what can we give him? As the writer noted, the cattle upon a thousand hills are his. And as one quipped, and the hill belongs to him also. There is certainly no material gift that we could possibly give to God. He himself is the author of everything that we possess. It is the giving of ourselves with which God is most interested. And it is, as David phrased it in Psalm 51, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. On one occasion, when Jesus and his disciples were in the temple, they observed various ones as they came in giving their gifts into the treasury. And the rich were giving great sums, and this no doubt impressed various people. However, Jesus was most impressed by a poor widow who came in and cast into the treasury only two mites. It was a paltry sum, but it came from a big heart. And Jesus said of this woman, Truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all. For all these out of their abundance have put an offering for God. But she out of her poverty has put in all the livelihood that she had. That woman must have had a great thankfulness even though she did not possess a large bank account. And the truth is that God is not impressed with the magnitude of the gift, but rather he is impressed with the magnitude or the magnitude of our thankful hearts. You know, there are so many things for which you and I uh, should be thankful. And I think back to some of my travels in India 30 and 40 years ago, when phone service there was was sketchy at best. I know sometimes when people were trying to get phone service in India at that time, they would have to get on a waiting list and maybe wait for weeks or months to get a phone installed. Of course, all of that has changed now. And in fact, India has become one of the hubs in the world for service calls for our cell phones around the world. A lot of times if you're having trouble with a computer or something, your call will go to someone in Hyderabad or in Bombay or Madras or somewhere else who will troubleshoot with you your problem with your phone or your computer. 
And so certainly a lot of things have changed. And I know the phone service in India has certainly changed drastically over the years. Now there too, about everyone has a cell phone. Well, this is something for which we should be thankful. Our phones are very useful tools for us. And I know other things that I've experienced in India over the years. We have some clinics that we support and they still, even to this day, are the only clinics within maybe 30 to 40 to 50 miles uh, in a circuit around them. And transportation to get to them is not all that great, uh, even to this day, although even that has improved some. But for most of us, especially in our country, we have very good health facilities. We have emergency rooms at hospitals. We have other emergency facilities and clinics that have been built in the communities where we live. And uh, our promise or, or our problem isn't, uh, you know, finding one, but rather our, pro our problem is trying to decide uh, which one we want to use and which one we think will best serve uh, our particular needs at a, at a given time. So again, our medical care is something we should be thankful for. And I know we at times complain about it and we talk about the cost and things of it, but nonetheless, it's a great blessing for us to have. You know, it will only take a moment to think and we will discover that Thanksgiving is a season of the year is not just a season of the of the year i mean but rather it is a condition of our heart it's an attitude of the heart that enriches every time of the year the epistle of the apostle paul or his various writings are filled with thanksgiving and it seems that paul found many reasons for gratitude and although he suffered many hardships and many times he was in danger or he lacked things that he might have needed, yet Paul's thankfulness sustained him even in the most difficult circumstances that he was surrounded with. First of all, Paul was thankful for other faithful brethren. Even though he had never met them personally, Paul wrote to his brethren at Rome in Romans 1 and verse 8 and said, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Men who have faith in Christ are a reason for us to be thankful. We are thankful for faithful brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world. As the Apostle Paul looked within himself, he saw a constant struggle between the forces of good and evil. And he openly confessed that he often did the very thing that he did not want to do and left undone the very thing that he knew he ought to do. He recognized this law of sin that was operating in his body. But as he beheld this wretched condition in himself, he posed this all-important question, who will deliver me from the, this body of death? And then there was this grateful answer as recorded in Romans 7, 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Paul was assured that he could overcome temptation with the Lord's help. And this was a cause again for great thankfulness. Paul enjoyed the privilege, I guess we could call it a privilege, of many detractors and enemies sometimes in his ministry. Uh, but he had been stoned, you know, in some places. He had been run out of town and others. However, he was encouraged through many of his trials by faithful friends in the Lord. The brethren at Philippi were especially supportive of Paul. And in his letter to the Philippians, he wrote, as recorded in Philippians 1 and verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. The companionship and support of our friends and loved ones is certainly a reason for joy and for thankfulness. 
our telling them that we are thankful for them would not only be an encouragement to them, but such thankfulness will also return a great blessing upon our own heads. Thankfulness is always, always multiplies itself with blessings to others and blessings to us. When Paul was a prisoner of the Roman government and on his journey to Rome, there were some brethren who had heard that he was coming. And they left the city and they came some distance to meet him on the way. Luke records the incident in Acts 28 and verse 15 where he writes, And from there, when the brethren heard about us, they came to meet us as far as Apiforium and three inns. And when Paul saw them, he thanked God and took courage. You know, such an act of kindness by his brethren in this day of trouble and the foreboding things that were facing him with imprisonment at Rome. This to Paul was like a refreshing drink from a cool spring. And so Paul took courage and he was thankful. Earlier on this same voyage, we read about the Apostle Paul on the ship on which he was traveling when it encountered a terrible storm. And it eventually was wrecked on the island of Malta. All the passengers on board had undergone some tense moments during those days when they saw neither sun nor moon nor stars. And they'd gone for 14 days without eating because the pressures had been so intense. An angel appeared to Paul and assured him of his own safety as well as that of the men with whom he was sailing. And in Acts 27, verse 35, we read another instance of Paul's thankfulness, where Paul said, And when he had said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. And Paul could do this because he had faith in the word and in the promises of God. Such faith as this produced a spirit of thankfulness in him, even for his daily bread. And such thankfulness will produce a spirit of thankfulness in us also. In his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul discussed with them the matter of ministering to the saints, the poor saints in Jerusalem, and he was preparing to come by and take a contribution from them for the saints in Jerusalem. He explained to them that their own liberality would result in thanksgiving and praise to God. And at the conclusion of the ninth chapter, Paul exclaims, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And of course, that indescribable gift was our Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't just the gift that he was taking to the poor saints, but rather it was the indescribable gift of God's Son that had produced this thankfulness in the hearts of individuals who gave to the poor. Our attempts to describe all the goodness of God to us are truly indescribable, yet our attempts at thanking Him, feeble though they may be, are accepted by Him. Paul had learned in all circumstances how to be thankful. And this was not a season of the year that he observed. On the contrary, it was an attitude of life that he carried with him through all the seasons of life. If we would only stop and think, we would always have reason to be thankful. There's a story told about the celebrated Bible scholar, Matthew, Matthew Henry, who made uh, commentaries on the scripture and wrote other things. A thief had broken into his modest dwelling and stole his purse. And so the busy, cheerful old gentleman, far from being downcast, turned to his diary and entered this cheerful observation. Henry wrote, let me be thankful first because he never robbed me before. Second, because although he took my purse, 
he did not take my life. Third, because although he took all I possessed, it was not much. And fourth, because it was I who was robbed and not I who robbed. We can see that even a robbery can be cause for thanksgiving on several different counts. One Christian publication has offered this advice for those who want to have a happy thanksgiving. They advise, count your blessings instead of your crosses. Count your gains instead of your losses. Count your joys instead of your woes. Count your friends instead of your foes. Count on God instead of yourself. We could probably follow this advice year-round and live in the blessedness of thanksgiving all the time. If we can only learn how to give of ourselves, how to forgive others, and how to live with thanksgiving, we will not have to seek happiness, but rather happiness will find us. And so in this season, this month of Thanksgiving in our country, it's a great holiday. I think the greatest one that we celebrate. And I pray that it is one that will live in our hearts, not just this month or this day, but throughout the year. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we are truly thankful to you for all the blessings that you constantly bestow upon us. They are too numerous for us to number, Father, and we cannot help but praise you and thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you above all for Jesus Christ, our Lord, our elder brother, and our Savior, the one who gave his life to purchase our redemption. And may we live in an attitude of thankfulness to you for this great gift, for this indescribable gift that you've given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And Father, we thank you for the countless blessings that you bestow upon us every day of a physical nature. You have blessed us so abundantly. And we do give you thanks, Father. And we pray that you would help us to be of a thankful heart and a giving heart that we would learn to share our blessings with others. And we know, Father, that we are only stewards of the blessings that you've given us. And so help us not to be stingy, not to spend everything upon ourselves, but rather help us, Father, to help others who are in need and to be grateful to you that you have put us in a position where we are so blessed that we're able to pass along your blessings to others. Father, we thank you for the gift of your word that is a guide to us, that instructs us, and that is a light to our pathway here upon this earth. And may it lead us all the days of our life and may it land us finally safely upon heaven's shore. And may we hear finally, Father, from you, that well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. And may we live joyfully every day and thankfully as we anticipate that heavenly reward that you have promised to the faithful. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, we pray that you are living thankfully every day and that you are a channel of God's blessings to others, that God's love is shed abroad in your heart to others around you. We pray that you will have a great rest of this week and that you'll be back with us next week as we continue these topical studies from God's Word. God bless and keep you. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest.
Thank you.